Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This last week was another uh, up and down week to say the least in the in the market. So just a quick update on our portfolio and how it performed. As some of you may know, I only have one stock right now in my portfolio that I've bought because I'll be buying it in chunks of $250 um, about every two weeks. So the one stock we have right now is Pfizer. We bought $250 worth on February 28th. And since then, the stock has actually done pretty well. Um, we're up six, just a little over 6% on our position. But regardless, um, I'm not really here for, for short term. So, you know, the little, little bump right now is nice. However, um, I'm more in it for the long term and the dividends that it will yield moving forward. And that brings us to this week's video topic. So today I'll be giving you guys my reasons for why I think Disney is a great buy, a great investment opportunity, um, and why I will be buying it in my portfolio. So first things first, we all know what Disney does. I'm sure most people, if not everybody, watching this video grew up watching some form of Disney content when they were growing up. It's been the go-to source for family-friendly content for the last 50 years, and since then, the company has expanded into many different areas of our entertainment lives. Because we all think we know what the Disney company does, many people don't bother to do their due diligence of researching the company. However, I think to many it's surprising how many entities Disney owns and how commanding of a position they hold in the entertainment industry. So because of this, I want to give a more in-depth overview of the Disney company and really give some good context to frame the rest of the video. So I want to talk about Disney's main business segments and how it kind of contributes to their, their revenue numbers. In 2019, Disney grew their total net revenue 17% year over year, bringing their total net revenue figure to nearly $70 billion. Of this, media networks made up 36% of Disney's net revenue. If you look at the portfolio of networks that Disney has, it's kind of ridiculous. They own Disney, ESPN, Freeform, FX, National Geographic, and they also have a 50% ownership stake in A&E. Combined, these brands control 14 domestic cable channels, and furthermore, they also own 8 television stations, 6 of which are located in the top 10 television markets in the world. In total, the company grew net revenues in this segment by 13% year over year, which is really high considering um, it's an established business and they're trading at uh, average P.E. Next, we have their parks, experiences, and products. This business segment made up 38% of Disney's net revenue in 2019. And aside from their iconic Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida, they also own and operate Disneyland parks and resorts in California, Hong Kong, Shanghai, and Tokyo. In addition to these resorts and theme parks, they also own their own cruise line and a controlling interest in National Geographic expeditions. For accounting purposes, they also lumped all branded product sales and licensing agreement revenues into this business segment. This segment grew revenues at 6% year over year in 2019, which is a pretty average growth rate for a company trading at this PE. Next, Studio Entertainment made up about 16% of the company's total net revenues, even when 2019 was not a standout year in terms of total box office sales. Disney's recent acquisition of Fox assets has given the company incredible influence in the movie industry. For example, in 2019, they controlled 38% of the domestic box office traffic, which is the largest market share ever for one studio. They also own standout brands including Marvel, Lucasfilm, or, or most people know them as the makers of Star Wars, and Pixar. In a similar fashion to their media network segment, Studio Entertainment has also seen great growth with their year-over-year -year growth being at 11%. And finally, we have the rest of Disney's net revenue, with their direct-to-consumer and international business segments making up 13% of their 2019 revenues. The main highlight of this market is the release of their own streaming service, Disney Plus, in late 2019. On top of this, they also own three other streaming services, including ESPN, Hotstar, and a majority ownership stake in Hulu. This, by far, is the fastest growing market segment, with revenues growing by 174% year-over-year in 2019. To give that some context, 
Their revenues in this market segment nearly tripled in 2019, while their other competitors like Netflix only grew their revenues by 27%. Disney stock has taken a sizable hit in the last month, with their total stock price decreasing by about 18%. This has brought the stock's valuation back down below a 19 price-to-earnings ratio. And this is one of the reasons why I think Disney is a great buying opportunity. That's the kind of valuation that would make sense if Disney was not expected to grow in the coming years. But that's just not the case at all. They are projected to grow revenues by over 15% next year, driven primarily by their rapid expanding presence in the direct-to-consumer market. So I have three bullish theses why Disney is a great stock moving forward. The first one is that content is king. The main reason why I believe Disney is a great stock to be in is that content is really king in today's environment. They have nearly 100 years of content that they have accumulated since they began, which makes it really hard for other new companies to compete like Netflix and Amazon. As many of you have probably seen over the past couple years, these same streamers have invested billions of dollars in their own originals content. The main reason that they do this is because paying royalties to others to use their content is expensive, alongside exclusivity becoming one of the only competitive edges these companies have. No other streaming service has the quality or quantity of original content that Disney has, and because content really is king, they have the competitive edge in this marketplace. Another reason is their brand is so iconic. There are very few companies in the world that have the level of brand recognition that Disney has. Disney brand isn't just strong because they recognize the name, but the name also brings everybody back to their childhood. And because of this and how nostalgia impacts us in our memories, it's hard to find anyone who has a negative opinion on Disney. Parents want to share that with their kids, and parents trust the Disney company with the child's attention. For years to come, as long as they protect their brand image, I think they will continue to be the number one choice for family-friendly entertainment moving forward. And finally, I'm also very bullish on their streaming service bundle. So Disney has decided to offer a bundle of their largest streaming services, comprised of Disney+, Plus, ESPN+, Plus, and Hulu. The crazy thing is, they're offering this bundle for $12.99 per month, which is the same price as the standard plan for Netflix. I believe that this streaming service bundle is the future for Disney because they can offer three different streaming services, all with a different focus and target market, for the same price as Netflix. This bundle should keep families engaged with the service because they have content for everyone. Sports and some content that may not be suitable for kids are for the parents and it's kept separate from their family-friendly service, which gives the parents greater peace of mind that the children are not watching stuff that they should not. Now, since one of the, the reasons I opened up this portfolio is to try to get some cash flow, I also need to talk about their dividends briefly. So on average, they have increased their dividend payments by 17% every year over the last 10 years, and they currently have a very low payout ratio of 33%. This means to me that even in a very bad economic environment, Disney will probably maintain or grow their dividends and will not have to cut them. Also, their dividend yield is 1.53%. Now, this isn't that high. However, it's a decent dividend. It'll get some cash flow. And in combination with their low payout ratio, I'm sure that Disney will be able to drastically increase the dividend payments in the coming years. So overall, I think Disney is a great investment option. They have a really strong brand with nearly 100 years of family-friendly content and they recently decided to reuse these through their Disney Plus streaming service. I think that the way they're rolling this service out is really smart, and it'll benefit Disney and their shareholders over the next five to 10 years and beyond. So over the next couple weeks, I'll probably be making a couple more of these videos um, and looking to get into stocks at these low rates. I think it's a good time to get in because the, the stock market's super volatile right now and it could skyrocket back up um, also it's a good idea to get in now while prices are low um, because when prices drop dividend yields increase so if i can lock in some of these these positions it'll only help my dividends and my cash flow moving forward 
I'm considering a couple different stocks to do analyses on next. Um, I want to start to fill out my real estate and also my financials industry. However, um, real estate may be difficult for me right now because prices there have just not fallen nearly as much as the general market. Um, so they're a little bit less attractive to me right now. However, if you guys have a stock that you want to see, let me know in the comments. Um, and I'll try to research that one and see if it's a good buying opportunity. Thanks for watching the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, make sure you like the video. And if you want to stay on board and see these videos when they come out, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, I plan on releasing these videos about once a week. Um, and I will see you guys in the next one.